Hogwarts Legacy is boring. 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 What? How dare you? You realize what you've done? Break yourself. Hold your horses. Now, the game is pretty good overall, but there's some problems that I haven't been hearing anyone talk about. My name is Rashad. I'm going to be doing a review today for Hogwarts Legacy. I'm going to be getting into all the details regarding the game, good and bad. Stay tuned. From the jump, you have a character creator that's, uh, it could be better, right? There are some options, but they kind of suck overall. Like, you can't really do anything besides modify the face of the individual and the hair. There's not really a whole lot. It's almost like you can't really call it a character creator at all, but at least they bothered to put something in the game to give your character somewhat of a customized look. So I suppose it's better than not having it included but it is a bit of a lackluster element, especially when compared to other games that allow you to do much more robust options. For example, I can't get my character big or t no, You get to select between four houses at the beginning of the game. Of course, I went with Slytherin gang. Let's see. Gryffindor house known for daring, bravery, chivalry. Hufflepuff known for patience, loyalty, and hard work. That sounds lame as fuck. Ravenclaw House, known for intelligence, creativity, and wit. Hmm. Slytherin House, known for cunning, ambition, and hunger for know. power. <laughs> Y'all already know what time it is, baby. Slytherin gang. Attention, students. I hereby decree that the Great Hall be forthwith decorated in the stunning banners of Slytherin. I shall be taking no questions at this time. Oh, ever. Slytherin gang. I heard some other reviewers claiming that the graphics for the game were shit. I don't know what those people were smoking. The game looks incredible. It's been optimized for PS5, PC, and Xbox, of course, with later on a Switch version, Xbox Series S and X version coming out, and a PS4 version. This game runs smoother than a black man with a fresh haircut, even though there is the occasional glitch here and there. Fam, um, I am literally like stuck in the wall. Uh, I can't. I'm pressing like every button. Wow. Okay. God damn! Bro, what just happened to the ball? Are you serious? That makes no sense. The draw distance is incredible. It's mainly like green fields, forests, and large bodies of water, but they switch it up with snow and some other aspects to keep you engaged. You can travel on foot, on your broom, or even on top of a couple beasts in the game. More on that later. They definitely give you some options. Uh-oh. Awesome. <laughs> uh -oh. Another pitiful trouble in my crap. Okay, here we go. Uh, wait, what is going to land? Well, okay, I gotta get the hell out of here. In a minute. Yo, why won't he land? What the hell? Oh, oh my god! What? Wow, bro. For real? He sniped me! Are you serious, game? This world is completely alive. There's so much attention to detail in everything that they put into this game, especially in the Hogwarts area. They put a lot of love into the game, that's for sure. You got ghosts singing, instruments playing on their own. If things keep going as they are, well... Obviously people talking in all the environments have their own little separate conversation with their own lives and whatnot. Ready to give you new quests constantly. Enemies killing each other. What's going on here? Like a freaking war zone. Alright, I'm gonna just wait until they finish each other off and then I'll kill whoever's left. <laughs> Secrets and puzzles everywhere, especially in Hogwarts Castle again, but also in the field. Alright fam, I literally went under a random portal in the water. Now I got like this whole 
secret area type joint going. Now this is what I'm talking about. Oh, it's a treasure chest only on one side. Okay, you can't even see it. Okay, that's kind of interesting, I guess. Main quests in the game involve these dungeon style areas similar to Legend of Zelda, complete with quests, tons of enemies to fight, as well as a boss at the end of at least most of them. Get a drill, son. Slytherin gang. Told y'all stop playing with me. Okay, we got a boss. Man, free. Easy. Uh, uh Off to a bad start. First boss on hard difficulty slapped me harder than Will Smith did Chris Rock. Oh my god, are you serious? I can't believe I did that. Wow, man. Got it there. Oh my! No! I'm not good at that. Um, uh, gotcha, bitch. That's it. Nah, fam. Nah. Nah, stop that. Nah. Nah. W. W's only. Come on, baby. Let's get it. Ew. Get that out. Stop it. Ew. Stop it. This game. This game over, baby. Slytherin gang. I told you. Unfortunately, while these are a major highlight of the game, it did leave me feeling somewhat underwhelmed sometimes. It felt more so like I was longing to play something that was a little bit better in terms of dungeon design, such as like a Zelda game or something, rather than being able to fully appreciate it in its own right. Most of the puzzles are absurdly easy and straightforward, leaving little feeling of satisfaction. I just didn't feel like they were like tough or thought provoking for the most part. Though I will admit that there were some puzzles in this one particular dungeon that were pretty good, as well as some really awesome visuals in this one unique dungeon. Now this is different. In this place as in life, death takes many forms. Avoid each of them at all costs. Uh, okay, don't mind if I do. Is the Grim Reaper? <laughs> It's already too late. <laughs> God is that? Oh no! They also got some little mini games up in here that are pretty cool, like the Summoner's Court mini game where you pull the ball over toward your direction. Similar to games that they have in real life that obviously don't involve magic and magic wands. And they also got broom time trials, which are pretty cool. A little interesting change of pace. I hold one of the fastest times on this course. Yeah, that's because I haven't Let's been on it Let's see if you yet. can beat it. These controls are mad wonky, but it's all good, fam. Ugh, that's not... You, you must have cheated, you... Ugh. Would you like fries with that? Would, would, would you like fries with that? Loser, loser. Let's talk about the music real quick. So the soundtrack in this game is good and it's fitting for the environment. However... It doesn't really do anything that interesting. There's really no really memorable soundtracks in it. I finished the entire game and did almost everything there is to do in about a 60 hour playthrough and I really can barely remember any of the music with the exception of like maybe the pause music. So I don't know who decided at one point that they needed to make these pause musics hit like this. I mean it doesn't like hit hit but something about it just feels relaxing, feels good to listen to consistently. You know what I'm saying? It don't hit quite like Horizon Zero Dawn, but it's still pretty dang good. As an aside, the introductory music, it's like in the first cutscene of the game, I'm pretty sure that was pretty good, but they don't really play that throughout the game, so... voice acting is a mixed bag so they had obviously motion capture on the bodies and faces which they did a phenomenal job on the voice acting can be mixed some of the performances are top-notch others are laughable ranrock seems my reputation precedes me why are you here 
No need for that. Just give me whatever it is you found here and we can let bygones be bygones. No. What do you know of my brother? <gasps> no. No. It can't be. If I hadn't mentioned it by now, the character Sebastian is evil. Crucio. Division comes in and where a lot of the controversy comes in involving some of the game mechanics that I haven't really heard too many people talk about in detail really at all. It's like everybody just kind of fawns over the game and doesn't talk about any of the flaws with it. So this is definitely going to be something that a lot of folks that I know have been talking about that obviously aren't game reviewers or anything so you probably haven't heard their opinions and they don't really comment on threads and stuff so you probably haven't read their opinions either but I've definitely been talking to some folks and we tend to share the same opinions here. With all the hype that was surrounding the game, all the stuff with the transphobia and JK Rowling comments and all this stuff, I ended up getting a little excited for the game even though I came into the game with pretty much zero expectations originally. But for whatever reason, I don't hear anyone complaining about this stuff. Even though some of these problems are obvious and can really slow and bog the game down. So I'm going to get into that. The story starts out with a character that literally gets eaten alive, Aaron Yeager style, by a dragon. At this point, I'm thinking, oh, sh this game's gonna be lit, fam. But after that, you basically just go on a seemingly endless journey full of tutorials, fetch quests, and they slowly reveal the story to you about a previous character named Isadora. So apparently Isadora wanted to remove her father's pain so badly that she delved into the dark arts which is uncharted territory that allowed her to eventually remove his pain, but she also began ingesting it and getting high off of it. Breathe it in. Oh, can you feel it? Yeah. Yeah, I know that's weird. The main villain of the game, Ranarok, is a goblin who wants to harness this pain power for nefarious purposes, of course, years after the events that transpired with Isadora. Ranarok has also been working with a dark wizard named Rookwood to help him, but the goblins and wizards aren't exactly best friends, so there's at least some conflict there. I gave you a distraction. I just watched a student take down your distraction. Who's this child? What are you not telling me? But now, I don't need you. I don't need any of you. But here's one of the problems. See, you rarely run into the characters throughout the game, besides a very small handful of times. Like you run into Ron Rock like toward the beginning, and same thing for Rookwood. But like, let me give you an example. So in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is obviously a completely different type of game, but it's still similar enough to where I think this example works. You run into Ganondorf after you complete like three main dungeons. You run into Ganondorf and you directly are encountered by him, essentially with him proving to you that he is much more powerful than you and that you don't stand a chance against him. Obviously he's going to be a problem later. In this game, nothing like that really happens with the exception of at the very, very beginning when you run into Ronorok and he is pretty strong. And at another point in the game, you run into him again, but we don't actually attempt to fight him or anything. He just kind of just bodies somebody, like his brother, and that's it. So <laughs> you don't really feel his power and his presence as being that much of a serious threat. Going back to Legend of Zelda Orphan of Time, you're kind of left in the wake of all the chaos and carnage that Ganondorf has wrought throughout the years in Hyrule. You look at Hogwarts Legacy, you know, some people speculated that maybe Hogwarts was going to get invaded, potentially destroyed, or at least part of it being destroyed, but nothing like that happened. So it just kind of feels like by the time you're at the end of the game, 
there was really no stakes to the game and like it really didn't matter really at all. Whereas I was looking for something a little bit more impactful that tied into the direct story of the Harry Potter series or something like that. You don't know what you're saying. Take a breath for a moment. Oh, I know precisely what I'm saying. Oh. Oh. The real draw of the game isn't really the story here. It's mainly just going out into the world and exploring, or exploring Hogwarts Castle in general, rather than the story being a critical aspect of it. The story almost could not have even been included, and the game would have been almost the same. It's kind of a shame that it's like that, I heard that they're gonna do a sequel, so hopefully they do better with that the next time. Throw it away! Let's talk about the combat for a moment. So I played lots and lots of different games, lots of different action games, similar games where you have magic attacks. Obviously something like Elden Ring has magic attacks. Now here, the combat isn't terrible, but I'm kinda shocked that no one has called it out for being clunky as hell. The character is really stiff and slow, and while the spells are decently varied, it seems like there's only actually a few that are useful, with the exception of the unforgivable curses that we'll get into later. They try to force you to change it up with some of the different colored enemy shields and whatnot, but honestly, these just make the combat feel like they're a huge pain in the ass when facing large volumes of enemies because you just can't really attack them all at once and they really bombard you later on in the game, it gets kind of crazy. Uh, you have a roll ability, but sometimes there's just so many enemies on the screen from all sides, it can get incredibly disorienting, and they all can shoot projectiles at you from anywhere. You can block some of them, but even then, you still can't even block all of them, so it turns into you pretty much just like constantly like mashing the roll button, getting like maybe two spells in, mashing the roll button again, throwing some plants out to help you, rolling like your ass again and even though this might sound something similar to like how things are in Elden Ring there's much more of a chance for you to actually understand what's going on and actually time your rolls rather than just needing to just spam it like crazy like you do in this game y'all know you could get comboed in this game look wait for it wait for it there it goes right there. boom I got hit like three times no chance to do anything the enemy variety is pretty weak as well. A lot of the enemies look very similar, and of course they call them different enemies even though they're just reskins. Considering how quickly the enemies can be taken down, it's a real shame. For example, in games like Horizon, there's also way less enemies than there is here, but all those battles are much more unique in how you have to fight them, as opposed to just kind of mashing the button and using the same spells over and over again. There's really only one enemy in the game where you have to be very specific in how you take it down. That's the dung bog, these little frog-like creatures. When they're about to do their little tongue lunges or whatever, you have to lift their tongues into the air and then you can actually attack them with fire or whatever ability you want to attack them with and it actually takes up much more damage rather than just trying to tackle them. Shoot spells at their hard skin. So that's one unique element, but again, there's really not that many enemies in the game, so you don't really have a whole lot of weaknesses to exploit. Honestly, that's really the only enemy I can think of in the entire game where you have to fight the enemy that specifically. So it just feels like the combat just isn't varied, and most of the battles are the exact same, with the exception of maybe the bosses in the game. Most of the bosses are very generic as well, so that's not really saying a whole lot. The exception is maybe the final boss, if that, but for the most part, it's very similar to what you see in combat a lot of the time. You face these guardians a couple times, and they'll add, I guess, a new attack in, but that's really it. Man, you about to start cheating yourself a little. Okay, what is this? Dodge Fight. What? How did that still hit me? How? The Unforgivable Curses are definitely some of the best abilities in the game. Probably the best abilities in the game. They essentially break the game, allowing you to enchant enemies so that they attack each other or cause instant death, including against multiple enemies if the enemies are cursed. It's completely broken and it's crazy and I love it. Ah! 
Another game! You get a ton of drip or equipment in the game world that can be upgraded. One might think this is a good thing, but they give you so much equipment so often, so many different random treasure chests, that for whatever reason they limit your inventory space. Now this is really a boneheaded move because you're essentially forced to break up the pace, go back to town, sell your equipment, or choose to stay on the field and destroy a bunch of equipment, getting nothing in return. Have you considered being easier to work with? You can increase your inventory space by completing Merlin trials, but you have to complete so many in order for this to happen after you get past like a certain threshold. It's just not worth it in the end. Shame, really. Progression is old school RPG style where you get experience points to level up. Basically any task you do will give you some experience. You can also cater to a specific play style in terms of combat by using accumulated talent points. Dark arts obviously being the best. Majority of the quests in the game are laughable. Even a bunch of story quests are fetch quests with no meaning whatsoever. But side quests are generally even less noteworthy. They literally have people out here asking you to bring them potions or deliver materials on their behalf. It's like, are you fucking serious? Assignment to teach you the exploding charm, Bombarda. Once you have completed the tasks I've set forth, speak to me after class. What I didn't have footage of here is that they want you to gather an arbitrary list of materials. Most of the spells in the game, in order to learn them, you have to gather a list of materials and then they'll just teach it to you. So it just is literally a fetch quest. Now don't get me wrong, it's not all bad by any means. As they have a surprise dungeon where I thought I was going to be buying a new house, but this Cassandra Mason finessed me and brought me to a whole dungeon where it's probably the best dungeon in puzzles in the entire game. That's not very hospitable. Oh goody, someone to play with. You seem a cunning sort. What fun this will be. So Cassandra's husband is apparently some lunatic that's a ghost that obviously ghosts are kind of still alive but kind of dead. And he's trying to kill you throughout the entire dungeon and he's trying to test you and have fun with you and all this stuff. So it's actually pretty cool. There's a boss fight here that at first I was disappointed by but that's because it actually wasn't the real boss fight and eventually you end up having to fight this Cassandra Mason. Wow. Oh hell no, she is tough. She's not having that. You try to go and arrest her, and she's like, please! Perhaps a little visit with Cassandra is in order to clear this all up. Now they've been telling me some very interesting stories about your business practices. Perhaps you should come with me. I mean, eventually, after a couple tries, I did beat her ass. But she was pretty tough. Uh, shoot. Damn it! Oh my freaking god, dude! Cassandra Mason, hardest boss in the freaking game! I haven't talked very much about the overworld, but it is pretty freaking awesome. It looks really good. It can be somewhat lackluster doing some of the tasks, because there's like a bajillion Merlin trials, ancient magic spouts, constellations to find, and you have to kind of move the telescope around so you can see the constellations properly, which is kind of cool. Bandit camps where you do combat treasure areas, and let's not forget the hidden pages. These can be intriguing, I guess, but honestly, I didn't find hunting all this down to be that fun. Some people, I'm sure, love it, and I have fun with it sometimes, but other times, I just felt like, it really just felt like it was more of the same over and over and over again. I personally had a lot more fun in Hogwarts Castle. Like there was just so many freaking secrets, unique quests you could unlock there, moons to find, and even secret areas like out of the wazoo. So this was an awesome surprise, a secret puzzle room. So you gotta get like three treasure chests in here. I believe there was like also a final treasure chest. And I'm also pretty sure that there's multiple of these because the way they titled the quest, it was called like puzzle number one so i'm presuming that there's multiple of them i've done like two of them i don't know if there's any more than that but this was a nice little surprise for sure this review wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about a lot of people's favorite area which is the room of requirement here you can decorate the place however you want allocate captured bees grow plants for use in combat and make potions probably some more stuff that i forgot 
I know you can upgrade equipment there. Here's the thing though. For me, these things are cool distractions, but it also can come across as extremely boring micromanagement. I like the beast portion of the game, but you're basically required to farm their materials if you want to stand a chance against any of the tough enemies and beat the game on hard difficulty, like I was doing. Once again, there are arbitrary limits to the amount of beast species that you can have in the vivarium. The plants take forever to grow. Beast materials are also on a timer, so it just feels like there's a lot of waiting around and filler time in the game instead of just letting you just keep the pace. It's like they just had to set a limit on everything. They just couldn't make anything broken and have everything be too cheap. But, I mean, it still is. It just got stupid timers on it that annoy you. Forgive the southerner that's gonna come out of me here, but some of this stuff really chapped my ass. They're just not very good. I also enjoyed a mission where you go with Poppy to go save a dragon, and for whatever reason, the dragon tries to kill you after. There's a lot of elements to this game, so I'm not gonna go over every single thing, but I feel like that about covers it. So what do I think overall? Well... I appreciate anybody who's made it through to this point in the video. So if you have, please go ahead, do me a favor, give the video a like if you enjoy the content, if you wanna see more stuff like this. Subscribe if you're new for sure. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I actually did enjoy this game a lot. Regardless of my criticisms of the game, I did enjoy it a lot, but I'm just pointing out some things that I think that they could definitely improve upon the next time. I want a lot more quality over quantity, and I feel like they really went for quantity with a lot of the quests and just the amount of fetch questing and the amount of just random stuff they had in the world map was, to me, it was just kind of ridiculous. I want a much faster ramp up time because there was like literally about 10 to 12 hours worth of tutorials and stuff toward the beginning. Like you would go on a mission and then you'd come back and would like try to teach you something new and it wouldn't always be like a spell it would just be them unlocking the ability for you to do something i actually felt like it might have lasted even longer than that because being able to capture and use the beast i feel like it took like a really long time before that happened it took a while before you could use your broom and it just felt like you were just pigeonholed for a long time i think that's one of the reasons why people enjoy games like elden ring you can pretty much if you knew where to go almost do anything very 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 early on i'm pretty sure you can get the horse in like the first like 20 or 30 minutes of the game and you could just ride around on that almost anywhere on the entire world map from the beginning of the game compared to this game where you're talking about 10 plus hours before you can really kind of get out there and do stuff that was kind of an annoying element that i didn't appreciate about the game going from something like elden ring literally about a year ago to this, it really just felt like it was way too much hand holding. I want a much more impactful story where just more stuff happens because again, this story felt like a throwaway. Now that the story's over, I can just explore the world and it's like nothing ever happened. You know, the, the guy was never here. Anything that happened to any of the characters is for the most part inconsequential now. And I just don't really like that. I want there to be some sort of big impact to the world. Also, I want way better combat, so I know some people might love the combat in this game, but just watch and wait and see. Obviously, in a sequel, they're going to make the combat better, and then people will be like, wow, this is so much better, because I know sometimes people's imagination is like, no, this is amazing, you're crazy, but just play other games and you'll see what I'm talking about. Combat in a lot of games is better than this, even with shooting a lot of spells and stuff, so they definitely could improve some things. The combat in this game felt very chaotic and very disorienting to try to like block and dodge and shoot spells and stuff like that. It's, it just feels very wonky and I think that they could do a better job with it. So I want to see all of these different major elements improved in the next game. And that's real. Overall, the quality of the game is too high to give it like a bad score. So it's not going to get a bad score or anything if that's what you guys are thinking. But I would say overall, because of the issues I mentioned, I can't really give it any higher than about an 8 out of 10. And like I said, the reason it even gets that is because the quality is pretty freaking high. So, you know, I wouldn't really give it less than that. There's glitches, but there's minimal glitches. And there's some problems with some of the elements that I mentioned. But they did try to do pretty decent with the things like the combat and the story. 
and I will say that they're not bad, but there are certain things about them that annoy me that I feel like could be better. That's why it gets an aid from me. So let me know what y'all think. This video took a lot longer to make than some of my other videos, if you hadn't noticed. So if you've been here throughout the entire thing, you're a real one. Thumbs up. I appreciate y'all dropping some likes and subscribing if you're new to the channel so I can go ahead and make this baby grow. I really appreciate it, y'all. Let me know what y'all thought about the game. Am I crazy? Is this like the greatest game ever and I'm smoking for criticizing it in any way? It's a 10 out of 10. No flaws. You know, just let me know what y'all thought. This video took a lot longer than a lot of my other videos. I have made videos like this before, but this one took a lot longer. So if you're still here, you a real one. Thumbs up. I appreciate y'all dropping some likes on the video and subscribing if you're new. If you have a Twitter account, be sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Rashad Lamar. Y'all some real ones. Let's get these likes up. I appreciate y'all watching. We out. Y'all know I work full time. I put all my time into this video. Whole Saturday gone. Probably longer than that because this is just recording. I had to record all the footage and do voiceovers and get a bunch of clips and all of that stuff. Which is fun for me, by the way. So, it's fun for you. Thumbs up. Appreciate y'all watching. Catch y'all next time.